All right, so for those of you who've been following my Japanese maple seed germination videos, this one's for you guys. Over the past few years, I've made a series of Japanese seed germination videos that show you guys the easiest way to germinate these Japanese maple seeds. And a lot of you really liked those videos and went on to try the method and become really successful with it. Some of you not so successful. But I've gotten a lot of questions about those videos. And in this one, we're going to try something a little bit different to answer some of those questions. So we'll talk about that in a second, but I want to show you real quick. The other day, I went out and collected some Japanese maple seeds. So right now it's November 11th, I think, today, and it was a couple days ago I collected these seeds. So I did it a little bit differently this year. Not much different, but just a little. So usually I will wait until all the leaves or most of the leaves have fallen off of the tree. But this time I waited until I saw the brilliant red colors on the trees, on the leaves, but just maybe a, a leaf or two had just started falling. Most of the leaves were still intact and most of the seeds were still intact. So I went out and I collected a ton of Japanese maple seeds a little bit earlier than I normally would. I did this because I just wanted to see if there'd be a difference in doing it this way than waiting a little longer. So I've got a tote of fine fir bark here and there are holes drained in the bottom of it. We're going to use the fine fir bark because that's what I normally use. It drains really well, it holds some moisture, and it's relatively inert. For seed germination, it doesn't have to be inert. You can actually use potting soil or anything that you want as long as you don't waterlog them. Now here's the question that I get and the main thing that we're going to do different this time. Instead of stratifying them like I did in that last series where I just put them in the plastic bag, I threw them in the fridge and then pulled them out come springtime, this time we're just going to spread the seeds out right now in November, right after I picked them. We're going to cover them with just a fine layer and then we're going to water them in and leave them outside in the hoop house. Just watch what happens. So I'm really excited to see how this project turns out. We may have to do a little bit more work up front, but in the end, in the spring, we might not have to do anything. seeds spread out throughout here you saw me put a little layer over top and water them in everything is set in for the winter now unlike before I'm not going to put any of this in my refrigerator they're just going to sit outside and a lot of people ask me that question Mike why do we even need to do this why do we need to put them in the refrigerator and then bring them out in the spring well in this video we're just going to do it like this and we're going to see if they germinate come spring all on their own without any other intervention now, like I said, I do have holes in the bottom of this tote, and you do want these seeds to stay moist because they need to absorb water through the winter so that they can fully hydrate and get prepared for the coming spring. You don't want to let them dry out at all. I probably won't water a lot because it's so cold out here. There's really no moisture loss, and with this plastic lid on, it's going to stay nice and damp in there. Now, I didn't cover this to the point where it's sealed, and I may even crack that lid sideways a little bit just to get some airflow in there because you don't want it to be sealed up and just real uh, wet in that environment. It is going to be damp, but you don't. You want to let some airflow get in there. A lot of people ask me, won't I get mold in my bag when I throw it in the fridge? And yeah, you can get some. Letting a little airflow go through there will help prevent that. 
Now the medium I planted them in is fine fir bark. It's an inner material. There's no fertilizer in that at all. And I don't recommend fertilizing at this point. You want to wait until spring when those little seedlings start germinating and then you can go ahead and put your fertilizer on. Another thing to keep in mind with this setup is this. When we threw them in the refrigerator before, we controlled the environment. We knew exactly how cold they were going to be all winter long. With this method, they're going to freeze and thaw a little bit. It gets cold inside this hoop house. Both ends are open and all these plants freeze hard as a rock. The same thing will happen with those seeds, unlike in the refrigerator where you maintain a constant temp. And then when the spring comes, you pull your seeds out of the refrigerator, you do it after the danger of frost has passed. So you control the environment. Here, we have less control of the environment. These things are going to do what they need to do through the winter, and they're going to pop up on their own. And I'm crossing my fingers we don't get a late freeze after they germinated, but we'll see what happens here. So I think this is going to be an interesting one. I'm excited to see it. As usual, I've got to wait all winter now to see this. You guys are going to get it right now. And we're back. See, that didn't take that long. So it's been about four and a half months since that last clip you just saw. Today is March 26th. And I'll tell you what, I am so glad winter is over. Now we can get on to our little projects again and see just how these little Japanese maple seeds did through the winter and how they're going to do here going through the spring. The last time you saw me here, these little Japanese maple trees still had some red leaves on them. All that's gone now. We've gone through the winter. Now, just so you guys know, through the winter, when it came to watering these, I think I only watered them two or three times. It was every month, month and a half, maybe even I went two months at one point, but I didn't water them much. I only lifted this lid, and when I saw that the surface had kind of dried, then I just watered them lightly with the watering wand, and that was it. I didn't do anything else. I still haven't fertilized them yet. But let's come in here now. Let's take a look at what's going on. So I came out here a couple weeks ago and I saw something that really got me happy. So these little guys right here had just started to germinate and I couldn't hardly believe it. I thought it was still kind of early, but nevertheless, there they are. They've already germinated. They're starting to grow. I've still got the lid on there with it cracked for airflow, but I don't want the birds picking on them. So I'm gonna have to create something to keep them off of there. Now we've only got two of them going here, but they made it through the winter and they're germinating. And then I came out here today and decided to look at them and look what I saw. You gotta look close. You see that? Another one just starting to pop up there. And then I just kept looking and I kept finding more. And the more I looked, the more I found. Look at that. Another little guy just trying to pop out of the soil. And then I got a little bit uptight about something. You see that? Actually, I might be wrong. I thought that was a little stem that had got plucked off. It's not. Okay, I'm a little less upset. But look at what I just saw now. Just showing that to you guys. Another little one trying to pop up. And there's another little one right there. See if I can get that. You see that? Let's get this into a different position here. You see it? That little red top right down in there. Just trying to come up. Few of them all throughout here are starting to pop up. And I am so excited to see that finally happening after the long winter. So there are seeds. I mean, it worked out great, guys. And, you know, I, I had a feeling that a lot of them were going to germinate. But where the difference comes with the refrigerated method versus the outdoor method is, like I said before, with the refrigerated method, we control the entire environment. The only thing that makes me a little nervous about this now is the fact that you never know what the weather's going to do. And we could suddenly get just a real cold snap. We could get a hard frost or a hard freeze and lose all of these guys because it's still March 26th. And although we're, you know, just into spring now and the weather is warming, we're still getting down and touching 30 at night on some nights. Usually it's 34, 36, but occasionally it dips down just below freezing. Now this hoop house is gonna protect them quite a bit, although it's not heated, it will protect a little bit and the lid on top of this will protect some more. So. I think we're okay. I'm not too worried about it, but that would be one consideration. The only other thing I'm going to do now is fertilize. And I like to fertilize these seeds as soon as I start seeing germination because I use a commercial brand 
a fertilizer that is a cool weather special. I use them on my roadies and everything else around here. And I like to fertilize early on in the spring. That way it's got, you know, another month here but as it's breaking down and supplying the soil with nutrients so that as these guys start growing more and more, they can tap into those nutrients and they're already on their way once the weather gets warmer. Now with cuttings, I wouldn't do that. I don't like to fertilize cuttings until they're well rooted in, but seeds are different. They start out with a root and the top growth all at the same time, and they're ready to accept nutrition right off the bat. So I'll get these fertilized up. I'm gonna put them back over here, and we'll just give it some more time. I'll come back in this video when more has happened. I'll show it to you guys, and we'll see where we go from here. Remember, today is March 26th, so the weather is starting to warm. I think it's only gonna be a matter of time. We'll see you guys then. All right, so today is April 5th, and I think it's been a couple weeks or almost a couple weeks since that last little clip. Let's go check them out. All right, here they are. You ready? Oh, man. All right, I kind of led you guys on a little bit here. These things were doing so well. And as you can see, they're not anymore. We still got a couple little stems sticking up right here and over here. Everything was coming up. I probably had about 10 of them throughout there and lots more were just starting to emerge. And there we have it. I came out last night and I flipped the lid off just to look at it real quick and this is exactly what I saw. The only possibility is a mouse got into here because I've left a little gap. A bird couldn't get in there and deal with all that. It's only about three quarters of an inch gap. It was definitely a mouse that got in there and look at what it did. I had all kinds of seeds they all look like this they were all germinating they were all cracking open and that mouse got in here and ate every single last one of these seeds here and they are toast well there's always next year i suppose so there you have it i mean i'm pretty depressed about that man that really is a bummer i did not mean to lead you guys on with this one i really had big hopes for that little batch of seedlings and I they were they were doing great they were doing wonderful they were going to shoot off and they were just going to grow fantastic but you know like we're talking here this is what you get when you do this outdoors if you don't protect them and so what did we learn here well we learned that if you don't protect from not just the cold the, the sudden frost after they started germinating but and we did have a freeze last night but this plastic kind of protected it a little bit and uh, you're going to have to protect from slugs, you're going to have to protect from mice, you're going to have to protect from birds, all kinds of things. And so, you know, it goes back to originally what I was talking about in the beginning of this is that, you know, you could germinate these things outdoor and you saw we got them germinating and they were doing good and then more of them were starting to come up and then, boom, nature took its course and had its little feast. So can you continue to germinate the Japanese maples outdoors? Yes, absolutely. They germinated out here, but you're going to have to contend with nature, which means you're going to have to make sure that the, the freezing temps don't hit them too late in the season, the, the little critters don't get to them, and you're just going to have to keep a real constant eye on them and take care of any little problems that might arise. Now, had I put all those seeds indoors under grow lights for another month or two until they grew up nice and they were strong and healthy, would they have done better? Absolutely. They would have all germinated. They would have grown on until they were strong enough to take care of themselves. And the rest would have been history. But this is what we got. So there's really nothing else to talk about here. That one's done. We're going to have to wait until next fall to do this again. But I hope you guys did learn something from this one. I know I did once again. Hit that like button if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see more uh, ridiculous videos like this. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.